Generation Iron app on Google Play and the App Store. So we think about Arnold making a statement recently saying that bodybuilding needs to be drug tested going forward. You heard that statement? I did. Mm. It's not, it, I mean, it, it's gonna work and it's not gonna work. I mean, how many times have they tried that, man? How many times have they tried that? I mean, we'd have wanted to do that and make, put it, bring bodybuilding to the Olympics and all that stuff. <laughs> What is your problem with men's physique, man? What's going on with that? <laughs> I, listen, I'm going I'm to repeat what Lee Priest said uh, when we were talking to each other the other day. You know, I respect You spoke to Lee Priest the other day? Actually, we, oh, I had to talk to him last night, but that's a whole uh, different story. How did that go? <laughs> how did that see. conversation I got a little surprise for you. Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he said, I agree with what he said. He said, I, I respect anybody who goes in the gym and busts their butts, right? But I'm also a bodybuilder. You know, there is a whole, there, there is a brotherhood. There is a, there, you, there's a thing, a mentality. The, the, the puking and the, the, the passing out and the eating eight times a day and, you know, the, the, the sacrificing your life and for this stuff. I just don't think that, it's like almost like, um, I call it the pretty boy division. You know, we never, we didn't think of it like that. For us, it was a war. For these guys, it's more about who looks the prettiest. <laughs> I just can't do it, man. Respect. I respect him. I just, I can't. I tried. I tried liking it. I can't. I'm in the Dorian Yates uh, <laughs> line, man. I, I, I guess. They still go to the gym and they work out, right? Yeah, I mean, they do their thing. You know? <laughs> I, I'm, don't. Stop asking me questions about that. <laughs> well, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Budenia got very upset. Bundia got right. very upset at the whole people, you know, Q and other people poking fun of the division. Mm. And I think he went on a little rant. It was a while ago. And then he kind of gave And his... Dexter knocked him, knocked him right back down to earth. Dexter was, yeah, Dexter. yeah he, Dexter took, took the mantle for the bodybuilders and knocked him back down. I don't know Jeremy. I have nothing to say about him. Um, I'm just saying that I respect the fact that these guys work hard, you know, but there's only one Mr. Olympia. For sure. So what, what are you taking on the women's divisions, like bikini and... Bikini's nice. I mean, it's nice to look at. <laughs> they're nice to look at. They're cute. You know, they work hard and they do their thing. But they work hard. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. My girlfriend, she's a bikini competitor, so I see what they go through and all that stuff, which is fine and, and all that stuff. It's 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 good for the sport. It's good for the sport. I'm happy for the promoters more than anything else. You know, the promoters used to make about eight hundred, maybe two thousand dollars from a show. Which was nothing. Now they're making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars per show, just from bikini and men's physique alone. That's good. What about um, women's bodybuilding? Do you think it should be should make a strong comeback or no? I think they again. I'm going to put it on the shoulders, on the on the shoulders of the judges. They should have not let it get so out of control. They should have stopped it right at a certain point. They let it get out of control, and then at the end they're like, "Hey, it's too much." I feel horrible for these girls. Because they, put everything they work their butts off, man. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I was uh, in 2000, 1998, 99, 2000, 2001, I had Theresa Bostic. She was the female Ronnie Coleman. She won the nationals as, as a heavyweight. Just, a, I remember she used to come and I used to see her killing herself, you know, but there's nothing there. And what happened to her after the? After uh, she started, you know, what they always do. She had a website. She started doing wrestling and all that stuff, and she went a whole different route. And I don't know what happened to her after that. My, I respect her for the hard work. I remember how hard she used to work. Right, right, right. So, I mean, that's kind of sad, though, right? That they have to, you know, go into that route. I mean, unless they really want to, but you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, what else are you going to do? All right. I'm going to say it this way, man. All right. I'm going to say, exactly. I'm going to be real with you. And, you know, how do you feel bad for a person? I remember Theresa used to go to the Arnold Classic compete, let's say she would get fourth place and get a thousand dollar check, right? But she would come back and Monday morning when we were doing cardio, we used to be cardio partners, she'd put, she'd come with an Adidas bag. I will never forget this flat. She'd drop her Adidas bag next to the, the treadmill and we'd be walking. And she did this for almost two years, Adidas bag. So finally I said, 
tea. She goes, yeah, what up? I said, what's in the bag? Please tell me what's in the bag. You bring this bag all the time. She goes, look in it. She said, go ahead, look in it. I zipped it open, cash, cash. And that's when she explained to me. She said, I go to these shows and I make money. I hustle. They set up a wrestling appointments from 7 o'clock in the morning till 1 o'clock at night. And it's $500 for every, for every half an hour. They're coming back with 20, 30 Gs cash from these weekends, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe that's part of the reason why they, they stopped it? Maybe. Because it kind of, because it's not, it's not, at that point it's not a sport anymore. That's like something else. They're hustling, man. You can't, you can't put someone down for their hustle. I'm not putting them down at all. I'm, not, I'm saying not you. I'm just saying you, I, I can't put them down. They're hustling. They're doing their thing, man. They're making money. They're doing their thing. They're living their lives. Um, does it look good for the sport? No, it doesn't, you know? But from what I heard, from my little, little bird told me, you know, that it's coming back. That there's a guy who's actually, I forgot his name. His last name is Ward or something like that. He's coming, uh, he's putting up a lot of sponsorship money. He's got some, I guess he's got, he, he, he's, he's a very rich guy and he likes women bodybuilders. So he's bringing back some uh, women's bodybuilding. And I hope that they draw the line and they say to these girls, if you look like X, we're not, gonna, we're not even going to call you out. So come in streamlined, come in pretty, come in this and that, and see what happens. So do you think, for somebody that enjoys women's bodybuilding, right, if somebody enjoys that type of look, do you think it's, it's a, you appreciate the sport, or do you think it's a, some kind of, a, for lack of a better word, perversion that you, that you watch? Both. Both. It's mm -hmm. a fetish. Fetish. Yeah, it's definitely a fetish. Just like you and me, we like bikini girls. It's our fetish. <laughs> it's a different fetish. It's more of a standard, I would say, right? Well, it's not a standard. It's not. It's not. No, because if my, when my girlfriend, you know, she's, she's muscular and she's got this titanium round ass with big boobs. So when we walk into some place, people think that, oh, she's a bodybuilder too. She's a little bikini girl. But she has that certain look. I like that look. You know, there's a lot of men out there that like beefed up, you know, monstrous Mongolian women walking around like Amazons. Okay, that's their fetish. I'm not going to put them down for it. That's interesting. You know, I was going to ask you a side question. Um, you know, in boxing, like or when you fight, you're not supposed to have sex before, before, the, before the fight? Yes. What about in bodybuilding? Are you, are you supposed to? Are you, are you like not supposed to? Are you really? asking me personally? Like in general, is there, like, is there such a thing in, in bodybuilding? Yeah, but it's only because you're tired, mm -hmm. you know? The urge is still there, but you're tired. But it's you're not, not supposed to do it because no, it's going to make you no. weaker? or no? no, you know, that's a crazy thing. When I went to the Middle East uh, a few years ago, they asked me that everywhere, every seminar I did. They, everybody keeps asking me that. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? It's like, no, go do what you got to do, man. You know, I saw in a thing the other day with Ronda Rousey who says she tries to have as much sex as she can because it helps her calm down before a show. There's, there's her, you know, recipe. Right, right, right. Yeah. But you know, in boxing, you're not supposed to because it makes your legs weak or something like that. Well, that's what I mean. That's what uh, Mickey said to Rocky. <laughs> Rocky won. Yeah. No, Women weaken legs. Rock. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? Women weaken the legs. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I guess. I don't think that's true. No, man, that's horseshit, Vlad. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to that, man. That makes no sense. So what do you think about Arnold making a statement recently saying that bodybuilding needs to be drug tested going forward? You heard that statement? I did. Mm. It's not, it, I mean, it, it's going to work and it's not going to work. I mean, how many times have they tried that, man? How many times have they tried that? I mean, we wanted to do that and make, put it, bring bodybuilding to the Olympics and all that stuff. I think, I think it's a good idea at the same time. It's a bad. Look. The, right now, what's happening is, what's happening with the sport is, I go to these local shows just to, because I stayed away from that for a long time. So now I go and see what's going on. So when I go to these local shows, I realize there's only 10 bodybuilders, 300 bikini girls, 200 men's, men's bikini, what's it called? Men's, excuse me, men's uh, board shorts, that division. Yeah, sorry, the Dorian said men's bikini. <laughs> um, bodybuilding is, and, and they like to say, I mean, Bodybuilding's dying, bodybuilding. and I know Dexter get upset when people say, hey, because Jeremy Buendia came out and said, yeah, yeah, bodybuilding. No, to a certain point of degree, Dexter's right. We carry the whole sport. Okay, take out the men's open from the Olympia, see who goes to the Olympia. You see what I'm saying? 
or the men's open from the Arnold Classic. See who goes to the Arnold Classic. Nobody wants to see that. Everybody wants to see super freaks. That's on this side of the spectrum. On this side of the spectrum, the internet, which killed bodybuilding. The internet. Killed it. What do you think it killed? Okay, it? Vlad, there was a time when Ronnie Coleman would come into town. Nobody had seen him. Nobody has the internet. Nobody. And people would come and it's standing room only. He would walk out there, whether he was fat or he was in shape. It was holy sh Oh my God. It was like a rock star god, bodybuilding muscle god walked into the... The big Rammy, who's probably the most muscular, biggest bodybuilder on the planet today, just guest posed at Victor's show. It was crickets in the audience. Why is that? Just people are just, it's oversaturated. It's overkilled. People see it. It's like the first time you saw somebody get beheaded online. I remember that. I watched it and I couldn't sleep for two weeks. I was so upset. Right now, it's like, ah, okay, poor guy. Go to the next website. You get, you know, you just get brainwashed and it's just overkill. And I, and I'd say it again. I'll say it a thousand times. I think the internet killed bodybuilding. But it's like everything, though. I mean, you know, yeah, girls, models, whatever, True. cars. I mean, everything is on the internet. Yeah, when your eight-year-old son, like my boy, comes up to me and says, "Dad, can you give me Logan Paul's autograph?" I had to Google the Logan. Who the hell is Logan Paul? You know, and then I realized he's a YouTube douche. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm, I'm trying to explain to my son, no, man, that's not how it works. You know, <laughs> what about The Rock? At least I can find, a, I, you know, he's bodybuilding. He probably knows who I am. And, you know, he's like, nah, you know, The Rock, <laughs> Logan Paul. <laughs> All right. That's hilarious. I give up. <laughs> so, so you disagree then with what Arnold said about drug testing? You don't think it, it wouldn't work because it would lose that that the wow great, factor. The wow factor. Yeah. So do you remember the few years when he did drug test? Do you do you, do you remember? Yes. That? I don't know what years it was, but it was a few years when he did it, right? And what happened when they did that? Vlad, they drug they well for for the two thousand for two thousand one, my first Olympia, they diuretic tested. They tested for diuretics, so to, you take, to get rid of the water. So what did we do? All we did is we went, we got, we just went through the, to the, all the encyclopedias and chemists in the world to find out something that's not on the list that they're going to check for. And it became even twice as more dangerous as before because we all started to use Dimidex and Dimidex was dangerous, you know? And I remember, and I'll say right now, who cares? I remember the guy was standing there and they tested you before and after. So when you finished prejudging, there's a guy standing there. I remember this mean guy, he goes, pee in the cup. So they just sit there and watch you. I stood there for 20 minutes. Nothing was coming out. Nothing. So I'm like, what do you want me to do? Spit in this? I mean, I, nothing's coming out. Then finally, a couple of drops of something came out. I handed it to him, and he's shaking his head and this and that. And that's when I went to my coach at the time, and he goes, this is ridiculous. They're, they're killing you guys, and they don't even know it. So it's not going to work, man. It's not going to work. I guess it is what it is. Then. It is what it is. It's the judges. It comes down to the judges, man. If they reward gigantic, spongy physiques, that's what all the kids are going to go and do. Look like gigantic sponges. If they start to reward beautiful bodies like the leader brought us, Flex Wheelers of 1990. Go look at the top six at the 1998 Mr. Olympia. Any of those top six guys could win the Olympia today. So what's, what, why do you think the judges... How do they decide like which which direction to go and which direction to take the sport into? Uh, they go with what they have. Currently. Yeah. They look at what they have and what comes on stage and like, okay, well, this guy's this and he could be better. And you know, that's why myself and so many people in this world are sitting there begging Cedric McMillan to come in and shape. Because he's the only guy in my eyes out there now who's got a small waist. Beautiful body, proportions, mass, everything. He just has to get it, get it coming hard, coming shredded, man. And he got it. You know, this, that's what we're waiting for. If he wins, if, that, if, if Cedric can somehow pull this off, it will change. It will change the, the, the aspects of the bodybuilding, the more aesthetic. Let's, let's, come to, let's go more aesthetic instead of these gigantic monsters from Kuwait. Now, there was another guy by the name of Isaac Quiverdale, right? He moved to um, to Canada, and then he was men's open right. from Iran. Yeah. And then he developed brain cancer, brain a cancer. tumor. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't know talk about. Yeah, I know. From what Hassan told me, right, it was he started kind of like 
talking about bodybuilding as a whole, like, you know, it's not healthy or whatever. Right. right. Well, you've witnessed deaths in bodybuilding, right, over the years. Yes. You've, you've, you've known people that passed away. Yes. So when that happens, is it fair for them to criticize the sport or is it something that... No, it's not fair at all. Because they, they kind of they know, made that they know when they know when we went into Yeah, they know when we went into Nobody told me to stop doing it. Nobody told me to go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. I knew all the consequences and I got into it. 